out in Marvel Comics. Hello everyone, I'm Forum VX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer, and today I'll be taking a look at the old Marvel comic run, G.I. Joe issues number 71 through 80, as collected in Classic G.I. Joe Volume 8. Now this was uh, quite recently published by IDW, so they're fairly easy to get out there. However, the comics themselves were originally published in May of 1988 to late November of 1988. And by late November, um, I mean Marvel Comics actually had a, a couple of months where all of their titles were bi-weekly. So there are late and early versions of the same titles within the same month. Now, this is pretty much the entirety, this collects pretty much the entirety of the original Cobra Civil War. And that has, well, pretty much far-reaching repercussions within the G.I. Joe universe. And it also collects the um, sort of the aftermath as it relates to the G.I. Joes themselves. Issue 71 is titled Bailout. In this continuing issue, the remaining Joes in Sierra Gordo must team up with Zorana and the Dreadnoughts to escape to the seaport to evade the corrupt revolutionaries. While Destro is keen at getting the country's money, which was stolen by the exploitive American businessman, who also heads to the seaport to escape as well. In this issue, we get to see the best and worst of two characters in the story, a Destro, who will do anything and step on anyone for money, and a Zorana, who is a thorough tactical planner and maybe not so bad after all. Issue 72 is titled Stiletto. In this issue, Dr. Mindbender creates the Star Viper to infiltrate the G.I. Joe's Quonset Hut HQ and steal a vital data link. And what better time to do so when a new batch of G.I. Joes arrive and is shown around the secret base. This is the first appearance of the Star Viper, shown here as an individual and not a trooper, but without his full uniform yet. His stellar stiletto also makes its first appearance. This is the first appearance of new G.I. Joes Windmill and Skidmark and Wildcard and Skidmark's Desert Fox vehicle, as well as Wildcard's Mean Dog vehicle. Cropmaster makes his first appearance in the main title. His actual first appearance was in yearbook number four. And Captain Min is shown to have survived the explosion of his craft from issue 64. But his presence on Cobra Island was likewise hinted at in yearbook number four. And while always very close due, due to their new relationship, Fred and the Baroness are shown to have a more intimate relationship, also sh first shown in yearbook number four. Issue 73 is titled, Divided We Fall. In this issue, the Star Viper's successful mission against the Joes sparks jealousy between Cobra Commander and Serpentor, and a Cobra Civil War erupts. The US government, unhappy with the theft of classified electronics, sends a small team of Joes to investigate Cobra Island. Many cite issue number 40 as the first appearance of Admiral Keelhaul, the commander of the 1985 USS Flag aircraft carrier, but the character shown there isn't named and does not have a toy accurate uniform, or even an admiral's rank at all. Here is the first time we get the name and accurate appearance of Keelhaul, in my opinion. This is also the first appearance of Sneak Peek. Destro's demon tanks also make a cameo appearance, Plus, Iron Grenadier's uniforms are given to all of Destro's forces, not just the Sergeant Major. And General Hollingsworth is shown incorrectly colored as Caucasian. And this is the first time the Star Viper's full uniform is finally shown. Issue 74 is titled Alliance of Convenience. In this issue, under Serpentor's flag, Dr. Mindbender strikes a deal with the U.S. for G.I. Joe aid in return for their stolen classified electronics. But just as Cobra Commander and Serpentor's now evenly matched forces go head to head, Destro enters the conflict. Destro's demon tanks make a first full appearance, and this is the first appearance of Destro's AGP jets. General Hollingsworth is again incorrectly colored as Caucasian. And there's a dialogue error, where Falcon calls himself Flint. 
Issue 75 is titled, Holding Actions. The battle between Cobra Commander's forces and the combined forces of Suprentor and G.I. Joe rages on, and Destro finally makes his move on the two exhausted sides as easily takes an important area of Cobra Island. This has a nice bondage cover. Approved by the Comics Code Authority. This is the first appearance of Cobra Imp missile tanks and Destro's Iron Grenadier's ferrets, who are his demon tank drivers, but are mistakenly called nullifiers here. There's also an error. Um, Maverick and a Gyro Viper have swapped dialogue bubbles. Issue 76 is titled, All's Fair. In this issue, Falcon's observation team narrowly misses getting discovered by Destro, while the newly landed G.I. Joe armor forces slowly battle their way to the main conflict area. Serpentor, being impatient to wait for them, dooms his forces when he moves on Cobra Commander unprotected. This is the first appearance of Ghost Rider and his Phantom X-19 stealth jet. Due to his name matching that of a certain supernatural Marvel Comics character, the G.I. Joe title had a running joke that no one could remember Ghost Rider's codename, and thus avoided calling him by that copyright conflicting name. This is the first appearance of Cobra Bugs and their Secto Viper drivers. Although Bugs tracked submarines were hinted at in issue 73. And this is the first appearance of the Rolling Thunder. Curiously, it's also the first appearance of the Slugger, a 1984 vehicle, and Thunder, its dr main driver, is mistakenly called Tollbooth here. And this is the first appearance of the Toss and Cross Bridge Layer Tank, also a 1984-85 vehicle. I really had to check to make sure of this, because they are really old to be introduced here. And this is the issue where Zartan assassinates Serpentor, ending the Civil War. Issue 77 is titled Aftershocks. In this issue, the Jugglers, a secret cabal of US generals, tries to blame the G.I. Joes for backing Serpentor, the losing side in the Cobra Civil War, and have Hawk, Hollingsworth, and Roadblock arrested and the entire G.I. Joe team suspended. Roadblock escapes and enlists the aid of an unlikely source, Dr. Burkhart. This is the first appearance of Destro's Iron Grenadier's nullifiers, who pilot the AGPs. And Dr. Mindbender places Serpentor's body, as well as piles of salvaged bats, into storage aboard the landlocked freighter which will come into play in issue number 126. And Captain Min is given the Cobra More here, which he will use, ironically, against Cobra in the future. Issue 78 is titled, Payback. In this issue, Roadblock and the handful of G.I. Joes that escaped being rounded up by the jugglers, plus Storm Shadow, Jinx, and Billy, coordinate freeing Hawk and General Hollingsworth and Destro makes a surprising move while things are to his advantage. This is the first appearance of corrupt U.S. Senator Hegel, and Grunt temporarily returns to action with his girlfriend and ex-soldier Lola, although he did offer his services back in issue number 62. Issue 79 is titled Dreadnought's Rule. In this issue, a small team of G.I. Joes stake out a Dreadnought gas station when the Dreadnoughts return to it fresh from a military arms raid. During the ensuing battle, Junkyard, Butt's dog, is seriously injured. Cobra discovers and destroys the listening device placed on their consulate by the G.I. Joes back in G.I. Joe Special Missions number 7. And Zorana's seemingly random real estate seminar scam is a prelude to her later Broca Beach operation. There's an interesting error here, where Cross Country's vest has a name tag with the wrong name, his last name Slaughter. His prototype real name was Arlen W. Slaughter, and you can still see it listed in G.I. Joe Order of Battle number 1, but this was changed to Robert M. Blaze, so as not to be confused with Sergeant Slaughter, 
who was just added to the G.I. Joe ranks that year. Issue 80 is titled Rolling Thunder. In this issue, due to seismic instability, a new landmass forms off the coast of Cobra Island, so it's a race between G.I. Joe and Cobra to lay claim to this vitally important rock. This is the first appearance of Armadillo, the Rolling Thunder driver, but is called Rumbler here in error, or it was possibly his prototype name. The actual Rumbler character, the Crossfire driver from 1987, never makes an appearance in the comics. This is also the first appearance of Hardball, Charbroil, Muskrat, and Hit and Run. On the cover, we have cameos of Spearhead, who makes his first and only full appearance in G.I. Joe Special Missions number 21, and Shockwave, who later makes his first full appearance in Special Missions number 17. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.